Hold the camera. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Yeah. How's it going up there on the way? You guys good? Yeah, we're gonna fucking door dash right now. Walk up, it's gonna be a little. Kinda kept going. Yeah. <laughs> 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 didn't even phase him. Oh, you know, who ordered the tax? You know, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, hey everybody, welcome back to the Sean Shank Redemption Podcast. I say welcome back. You may have never been here before, but even so, welcome back. Um, lots of crazy things happened here. Big Sasquatch just showed me his naked chest. It's an amazing time here at the Sean Shank Redemption Podcast. Uh, but before we get started, I introduce uh, my awesome guest this week. I uh, want to give a shout out to my sponsors. Uh, first of all, Black Label Chronometers. Black Label Chronometers, uh, Ryan Babb, owns it and he can custom make any clock that you want he'll put it on a vintage record okay and they just look amazing so check them out black label chronometers uh, on facebook on the website and if you use the code shank15 that's s-h-a-n-k-1-5 uh, you'll actually get a discount off of your clock also check out myvibe.com myvibe.com they're amazing if you have the two o'clock you know tires you're at work Caffeine isn't doing it, you know, the lady in the cubicle next to you isn't getting you all good and happy and everything talking to her. Try myvibe.com. Basically what it is, with these smelling salts come in different varieties, you crack them open and it will light you up. Alright, so check out myvibe.com, that's M-Y-V-Y-V.com. And if, again, you use the code SHANK15, that's S-H-A-N-K-1-5, you will get an awesome discount and, uh, you know, my kids will be able to eat. I hope you care about them. Also, uh, this podcast, if you want to hear this, obviously this is a video version on YouTube, but you can also find me on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and um, also check me out on Spreaker. That's where you see uh, all of these podcasts will be there, audio versions, so you can listen to them when you're on the road. All right. So, that being said, let's get started. Again, welcome to Sean Shank Redemption Podcast. My name is Sean Shank, and I am very fortunate this week to have... Um, a phenom in the comedy industry, and uh, that phenom is named Elise Davis. That might be overstating it a bit, but thank you. I think not. I think my 30 years of professional comedianing, uh, you know, I have a pretty good idea of what a phenomena is. Do, 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 do. Stop. Phenomena. Stop. Do, 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 do. I, I'll keep going. <laughs> no, okay. Tell so. me more about myself. Well, I'd rather you tell them about yourself, but, um, okay, so I'll, I'll give you a kind of a little 411 on Elise. So, Elise, um, and you can tell us all about your acting and all the things that you've done, um, has been in the comedy in industry officially for how long now? Three months. Three months. Three months, okay? Just so you know, it takes even a really damn good comic a year and a half, a year to a year and a half to be able to even host a show and be funny enough to carry 15 minutes. Elise has been doing it for three months. Not like Elise did it before, you know, and was doing stand-up ago and started again, like literally doing it for three months and now she, as a matter of fact, tonight uh, at the Underground Laugh Lounge, which you see behind and you can check them out at undergroundlaughlounge.com. Um, Tonight was headlining with Steve Iatt, who's one of the funniest comics you don't know about. Right? Amazing. And um, I was featuring, and Elise was emceeing this week, and this is now your second or third? Third. Third time in, third time in C. It is unfucking heard of. This just doesn't happen. There's only a few times, there's a few comics out there that have been able to have this kind of advancement this quickly. Um, a couple of them you heard of, Howie Mandel, very good example. He's one that was just natural right off the bat. But Elise has jumped into the game and is crushing it. But you know what? You do me a favor. Sure. How did you get into this? What was the impetus for you to get into this? Why did you choose, of all things, to do stand-up comedy? Okay. Um, I've always admired comedians and stand-up comedians. Um, the ability to make other people laugh is an incalculable value for me. Um, and I've always enjoyed entertaining, you know, co-workers and family members, but I didn't think it was something I could do, you know, like, 
real comedians and stuff. Um, so initially, when I met like you and Brad Miller um, doing a sketch comedy show, back up a little bit further than that. I, I was on board to do the sketch comedy show that got killed by COVID in 2020. So I knew that when I saw that come up again, I wanted to be a part of that. Okay, and what was, is the sketch comedy show? Um, basically, I think you guys go collect a bunch of writers and they write just funny skits and Brad collects a bunch of actors and we put those skits on. Right, and you've been an actor for a while, but here's, here's the thing about these sketch comedy shows. It's not, not everybody can do comedy. I mean, everybody can do comedy a little bit, but not everybody can do comedy and make it funny and have the timing and everything else to make it play to, you know, John Q and Susan Q public, right? So Brad just doesn't pick actors. Like, you guys kind of go through a process because you have some natural abilities on stage. And you obviously have, just like Micah and some of the others who were on the cast, just have this innate ability to be funny by your, on, by your own, but also when you're handed a script, you know where the funny comes from. Uh, you know, whether there's some directing happening or not with it. Um, that being said, we've always kind of had that funny spark. I'd like to think so. <laughs> I remember several years ago, um, we went out with my, my two sisters and my mom for a birthday dinner or something, and I got a cocktail or two, and I just remember my one sister commenting on how funny I was, and it just never really clicked. I mean, that's just, I was just being me. I wasn't trying to be funny, I was just existing. So, um, I've, in terms of theater, I've always gravitated toward the comedies. Um, it's my favorite types of movies. Um, I just really enjoy comedy anyway. Um, but the acting has given me just a good background for interpretation. Um, honestly, I was doing a play and our stage manager was doing the stand-up 101 class. And I went to see her and I'm like, I could do this because I can do somebody else's script. I can play a character. I can't write my own stuff. And you, you know, you're the only one on there, in, upstate on stage, and it's all you. There is no character. Like, I, can, I can't do that. Um, so fast forward to we did the sketch comedy. Um, there was another round of the comedy one on one. I can't do that. I just can't do that. Um, but six months later, we did the improv class. I'm like, yes, I can do this friends that we um, supported in the, the 101 class and um, they're like, yes, you should definitely do improv. It's a good skill for acting, it's just a good skill for life. Um, but I got to know some other people who were in the comedy class and they're like, you really need to do the 101 class. So I'm like, all right. <laughs> and at that, uh, right around that time I started just keeping track, making a list of things I found funny, funny things that happened in my life, which really gave me a leg up when the class started, because I could just start turning that into a dialogue that I could do on stage. Okay, so now that you, you're part of the Underground Laugh Lounge MC Core, yes. for one. That was a gift. I, I mean, the, the original plan was someone had dropped out and you needed a body and I wasn't even going to have to do comedy. Just do a, a pure, you know, do the MC script, introduce the comics, call it a day. Right. And I said, I can do you a lot better. I love that. It's, it's almost like this schmarmy kind of Western like. <laughs> um, okay, so, but now you're part of the core, yes. right? So it started out where you were just going to do a straight MC. What that was talking about is on Straight MC, like you said, you're just introducing the comics. It gets the audience paying attention this way. But like you said, you did one better, and you went up and crushed your sets. Like you just had people laughing. And 
you know, every comic bombs that will happen to have this me, everybody, but so far your track record is you just don't do it. Just wait for that shoe to drop. <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe it never will. Who knows? You know, um, but you've been killing it. But now that you're a comic and people know you're a comic, what has changed for you in your real life versus the stage life, which is a different animal? Like with how people interact with you, knowing that you're a comic? Um, I wouldn't say they treat me any differently. I mean, it's, it's always um, been a big encouragement to me if I can get like my coworkers and family members to come see me. And then, because plays are different. Plays aren't for everyone. So it, it just, I would put my heart and soul in six or eight weeks of time into doing this play to have like my parents and my husband and my kids come and maybe two other people for the whole run. Um, and this has been different. People like comedy. People want to come see it. They ask when the next shows are, um, what I have going next. It's, it's pretty awesome. It is, it is obviously very different, but I mean, it, it produces, I guess, a different like remuneration for when they come in and they pay their money. Because, in play, I mean, plays are great. I was a thespian for years, um, but you're just rehearsing somebody else's way. You're putting your, put your flavor on it. So it's not to take away from acting. Acting is one of the hardest fucking things in the world to do, right? It's not just playing pretend. But the comedy, like you said, it's on a different level. The appreciation is different. Do you find that people around you are now coming to you going, hey, you can use this in your set, or hey, yes. this could be in your bit? Yes, and it doesn't, it doesn't no, no, ah, it's not. <laughs> Thank you, but no. <laughs> is it, okay, so you now you know. Yeah. Like, isn't it funny how We'll call them normies, I'm sorry, right? but like there is kind of a, yeah, there's a national level sense of humor. Muggles. Muggles, yes, where it's just like, hey, working hard or hardly working, you know, and something will happen, you're like, man, you could put this in your set, and you now know what works on stage, and you, it's, it's very difficult, because it's not to be demeaning, and you don't want to hurt their feelings, but it's just like you want to pat them on the head and go, Oh, oh, sweetheart, no, that's... Yeah, just, I mean, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but, the you know... take care of it's, uh, Yeah, it's, and it is um, a thing, and it's probably not going to win me any hearts with this podcast, but it's just, it's, it's, you're so fresh into it, and not to take away from your years of acting and everything, but now being a, a comedian, that's your life now. Like, you're going to hear that all the time, because now that people know you're a comic, you're going to hear that shit all the time. It's like being a doctor, and you go over to your cousin's house, and he's like, yo, I got this, like, fussy-ass <laughs> bump. Like, what is, am I going to die? I get that a little bit as a nurse. <laughs> That's right. What a nice segue we've created. So, tell us about your day gig. I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for 22 years, 23 this year. Um, I work in an outpatient orthopedic surgery center. I've been there for 13 years. Um, I actually work in the OR. I do not scrub in. I just circulate. Um, but just a really fantastic group of doctors and great people that I work with. I, 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 every job has things that suck, but um, it's nothing bad enough that makes me want to start all over again. <laughs> I can see myself retired from there. What? Okay, so is that world compatible with comedy? Uh, for now it is. I mean, being the nature of being outpatient surgery center, there's no weekends, no holidays, no call. So that makes it a lot easier to accommodate, you know, your usual weekend evening schedule. Um, it does provide a lot of fodder for my material. Mm -hmm. well, that actually leads my, me to my next question because you and I share uh, that having lived, you still live in it, but nephrology tech, I was in the EMT out in the streets, met buses during COVID, all that. 
everybody has their fucked up stories. So my next question to you is, without re you know, violating HIPAA, um, why is Weird, it's like we've got ghosts around here that are dropping stuff. It's so strange. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys heard that or not. It's crazy. Um, so what's your fucked up story? I know you've got some. God, probably the biggest one that stands out to me, this was like when I was a brand spanking new nurse. I was working on psych unit, and there was this elderly gentleman who was there for dementia and behavioral issues. Um, but he was receiving breathing treatments, and I just remember him bellowing out of the room, Nurse! I need a blowjob in here! Ah. He, he meant a breathing treatment. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that here. Why don't you tell that on stage? That's fucking hilarious. I don't know I might will. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh my god, yes, that's that is stage. There's so much stuff I have not done on stage yet. You know what? I'm not I'm not gonna try to rush you, but that's funny. That's funny as <laughs> shit. I need a blow job in here. Okay, so I was doing rounds at a nursing home. And not rounds, clinicals, clinicals at a nursing home. And there was a little old lady and you know bedridden and she probably weighed 90 pounds but the nursing staff said be careful with her and i'm like bro i'm just going to check vitals like i'll be no hope much worse um i go in there and she's tiny like she's just skin and bones nothing and she had this little pink jogging suit on and so i come in i'm like hey miss you know name you know redacted I'm here to take your vitals, and so I get over there, you know, and I get my, my little litman all ready to go, and she looks at me, and she goes like this, she goes, to like come closer to the bed. Now, I was also fresh and new and stupid, <laughs> so I leaned in, and she shook her head, she goes, like, to come closer, and so I leaned in like I thought she had something to tell me. That nasty old bitty, mm -hmm. took her eagle claw, slapped it on the back of my neck, and started pulling me down to her. And at the time, mm -hmm. I, I remember this specifically, my max bench at that time was 335. I was on the edge of the bed, <laughs> shaking, because I couldn't pull away from her. And then she started going, ah, ah, with her tongue, <laughs> and pulling me. And like, it was a struggle, I could not fight to fight her <laughs> off and it was like a good minute that I was down there and finally I remember oh I wrestled for like 15 years and I ducked out of it she flopped back down in the bed and I was just like I ran out of that room and I went to the, the nursing staff and I was like I, I can't I can't do her bites. And, and they're like, what happened? I'm like, you fucking <laughs> they know knew. what happened. They knew. She tried to face rape me. That's what happened. Thanks. So, okay, all right. So, Let me give you one more story, because no, that reminded one. me of what. Yes. Um, this happened actually not very long ago. I also have a side gig at a nursing home, because I'm trying to pay windows off for my house. So I, do, I haven't done it in a long time. But, um, so, there's this guy. We'll call him Tom. Okay. Big dude. Uh, diabetic does not miss a meal. I mean, usually you can hear him just again bellowing, Hey, get me something to eat. That's what he sounds like. <coughs> oh, okay. But, but not this particular day. I mean, usually he's a gem for taking his meds, insulin, all that stuff. Not this day. I can't eat anything. Well, well why not, Tom? Huh? Somebody took my innards out and fed them to the hogs. Now this is a dementia care unit. So usually oh, if they refuse their meds or don't do something, 10 minutes later, it's fine. The, no, he stuck to his story all morning long. He w I couldn't give him his insulin because he didn't eat anything. Um, wouldn't take his pills. I can't, I can't, I don't have a mouth. <laughs> they fed everything to the yeah. hogs. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, well, Tom got a visitor that afternoon who brought some Hershey bars, and those bad boys went down smooth. So 
Huh? Huh? Maybe you want to try some lunch now? <laughs> yeah, it was fine. Everything was fine. <laughs> That's so nuts. I, and the thing is, so this is one of those weird things that if you're not in the medical industry, when you're in the thick of that kind of situation, like... I don't know what to do. <laughs> exactly. You, you don't have a mouth. Nah, I ain't got a mouth. Well, what are you communicating with? There's no logic. You yeah, can't. it doesn't work. No. Oh my god, that's... I love it. Um, Alright, so I've, I've got one. Okay. And this isn't a one up spin. this is just fucked up things that have happened. Alright, so... I worked in rural EMS, which is... Fat, and I've done Metro, like heavy Metro. I was in Tulsa Metro. Um, but I was working rural county EMS, and I get toned out at 3 a.m. Three hours before my fucking shift was done, because we were 24 on, 48 off. And get toned out at 3 a.m., and it was gunshot wound to the head. And I remember I was in bed, and I just thought, nah, this is a fucking dream. Like, because it's a gunshot wound to the head in a rural county at 3 a.m. There's just, it's like, this doesn't happen here. I grew up here, it doesn't fucking happen here. So I go back to sleep thinking I'm having a dream. All of a sudden, bam, 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 bam. My partner's like, what the fuck are you doing? I was like, what? She goes, we've got a gunshot wound to the head. I go, I literally go, oh, that's real? <laughs> She's like, yeah, it's real, we gotta go. So we go to this local bar, which, I mean, literally three minutes from the station. It's, it's like all the bars around there, it's just divey as shit. We get there and there are cops all over the place, you know, and we couldn't even go in because they had to secure the scene. Finally, we get to go ahead. I grab the go bag, we go inside, and I shit you not, this dumb son bitch was sitting in the, the exit, exit hallway to the bar, had a beer in his hand, was holding bar towels here, had a clotted waterfall of blood down his chest that looked like a Santa beard, and he was drinking beer. I walk <laughs> up, and the first thing I do, I drop the go bag, and I slap the beer out of his <laughs> hand. It flies down the other end of the hall. And he looks at me, he goes, Ooh, what are you doing that for? I go, alcohol fits the blood, <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> I go, what are you doing? And he's like, Ooh. and then his, Buddy, who looks like our massive security guy, Will, here at the club, comes over, gets in my face, and but unlike Will, this guy was like your diabetic fellow. He's he was as big as Will, but he was also this way as big as Will, right? And he comes here and he's like, "What are you fucking with my buddy for?" And I put my hand in his chest to stop him. His tits literally wrapped around <laughs> my hands, and I was like, "Dude, get the fuck out of my face! I gotta save his life." So he backed off, we pulled, and it was a stack of bar towels like this, they just kept slapping them on, right? Instead of like applying pressure, no, we're just gonna, like he was this, towels, yeah. yeah. So we took the stack away, and the gunshot had gone through here, missed every vital, everything, absolute miracle. Came out the backside, there was cavitation on the back end. Cavitation meaning like it, it goes in small, comes out, boom, big. Blown out the back. We get him all wrapped up. He looked like he was a Sikh priest, you know, with the big turban like this. Get him out there and we're like, all right, dude, what happened? All right, we need to know what size of thing. Just, you know, get the quick history and everything. This is what he said. He said, my buddy and I, and it, it was almost as if he wanted to start the thing like, my buddy and I were going to a Bible study at huh? 1 a.m. and perhaps thought that we should stop by the orphanage to give bread and things to the children. That's like how like th this guy was trying to come, come across. And he said, my buddy and I were going to go have a drink at the bar. And when we got to the car, I was getting in the passenger side and I saw a 22 rifle sitting there leaning up against the seat like this. And I said to my friend, that's quite dangerous. I shall remove it from the seat and put it in the back seat <laughs> so as not to cause any trouble. And when I reached down to grab the gun, I accidentally hit the trigger with my thumb and it shot me through the neck. Oops. And I said, 
how did that have you end up at the bar? <laughs> and so he, hey, time out, folks. Hey, Will, are you back there still, bud? Yeah. Turn off, would you please turn that off because it's just loud? Um, so, yeah, our big security supervisor here, Will, who's also a stand up comic, who will also be emceeing for me in June. So, fuck yeah, Will Mounts. Um, so, I said, how did that get you to the bar after you were shot? And then he just, you could tell, like, fuck, I've been found out. <laughs> There's so, a hole in my story in my head. And my, <laughs> so he goes, all right, here's what happened. <laughs> his girlfriend got pissed off at him because he wanted to go drinking with his buddy. She fucking shoots him in the trailer park where they lived. That's crazy. Yeah. Shoots him through the fucking neck, all right? He's got a hole blown out the back of his head. I mean, like, it was at the base of the skull, like this, it went me and boom. He still gets in the car with his buddy. Now, I grew up in this area, and I know for a fact, if you go to the T at the end of the, the, the lane in that country or that trailer park, if you go to the right, you go to the hospital. If you go to the left, you go to the bar for one last drink before you go to the hospital. So guess what they chose? I'll show her. I'm still going. I'm still going to go get my beer. And they fucking served him. <laughs> That's what a shithole bar this was. It was like the guy's literally bleeding out. And like, oh, we'll get you some towels and a beer because they're, they're going to make that sale. There's a lot of things wrong with that story. Mm. Yeah. And that story is dedicated to Werner's Ginger Ale. Verner's, where you can find it in St. Louis and Michigan. It's one of the best ginger ales out there in the market. Verner's doesn't sponsor me, but if they want to send me some cases of Verner's. Mm. Anyway. I accept. So, all right. Do you have any other fucked up stories before I get to my next set of questions? This one's about me. I worked for a plastic surgeon for about three years. Oh. Very, very small size. A lot of titties there. A lot yeah. of titties? A lot of titties. Did anybody just do one titty? No. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe like a post-cancer reconstruction. That, okay, that makes yeah. sense. And actually, support breast cancer awareness, folks. Squeeze a breast, save a life. There anyway. you go. Um, very small staff. Um, I did learn to scrub breast augmentations right toward the end of my tenure there. And it wasn't hard, it wasn't hard. I thought I was doing very well. Now this doctor was very fast. He liked to time himself and um, he was, I think his best was like 26 minutes for a breast stop. And so after we were done with the one... Did, like to literally slit and hurt in 26 Is that minutes? a lot? Does that sound like a lot? No, it sounds like an incredibly short amount of time. Yeah. Jesus, that's, that would... Do, I'm sorry, please go. See one, do one, teach one. That's, that's the mantra. Okay. Uh, he was very good though. But I wouldn't want someone to rush that sort of procedure for me. But I did this procedure and he said, how long did that take? 28 minutes, and he's like, oh, it seemed like more, which I took as a compliment, because obviously it went a lot faster than it seemed like. Well, his partner informed me that that was not the case. It seemed, seemed like longer meant it was a very painful long procedure, but I did great. I thought I did great. I a lot of titties. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I, I appreciate doctors that are quick um, and to the point, you know, like they've got a job to do and they're good and they want to get, but if you're like, man, I got to be my personal best, it's like, bro, that, that, yeah. that's not good, yeah. you know, especially when you're like slamming titties up in somebody, <laughs> because I mean, like literally it's an aesthetic thing, you know, and it means something to the people. And if you get the titty like slightly off, you know? I, I, no offense, Doc. I'm sure you're fantastic, but Jesus, <laughs> slow down on the tits. We're not naming any names. No, we're not naming. But how fucked up is that? It's just like you would wait. The the female form is a work of art, and you yes. are enhancing that. Yes. Don't mess it up. Not just that, but bro, you got titties. Spend some time with them. Nurture those tits. I think that kind of goes along with your gynecology story. 
Mm. What is it, the Friends episode? You know, if I see one more cup of coffee, <laughs> if I see one more set of tits. I've seen so many titties. I don't know. You tell your guy. Is there such thing as too many titties? Nope. Okay. Nope. And, well, okay, I will say this. I used to have this mantra of all titties are good titties. That's not true. 99% of titties are good titties. I learned that, and you know, humans are humans. Like, I'm not going to sit here and like body shame on people, but God, dude, there is some fucked up shit out there. You know, like, I have seen some shit. I've seen a guy pull a skull cap off and his brain was exposed. And yeah, I've seen some shit. Like, but you know this. Yeah. You've been in the medical field, you know this. So, all right. Moving on, because this can get really fucking disgusting, yeah, yeah. and we've, we've been at this for almost 45 minutes. All right, so here's another question. You talk about, in your set, interesting stuff. You know, you talk about, like, life, your name, you know, um, which always gets a fantastic response. Um, but there are some sp subjects that you are passionate about, and... One of those things is conspiracy theories. Okay. Okay. Now we saw, heard the response tonight when I talked about the Mandela effect. The audience went dead fucking silent. silent. It was crazy. And here's the thing that pissed me off. It, like it upset me because it was almost like you know, almost watching cattle freeze. And growing up in the country, I've seen it happen where they have all fucking startled or they'll just, you know, like, whoa, you know. And that's what it felt like. It's like nobody wanted to admit it, admit this thing that everybody's fucking talking about. And it frustrated me because it was just like, guys, come on. This is, if we keep just fearing talking about a thing, it gives it power. Right, or just being labeled as a conspiracy theorist. It's been so, um, Talked out on in the yes. media. Yes, very much so. And the thing is, conspiracy theorists is actually a label that was created by one of our initial friends, the CIA, FBI, to downplay people figuring out the their behind the door shenanigans, exposing them. Well, now they had a label for it. It's just like toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity was a thing that they were doing a prison study. And they brought that label in to talk about how some of the prisoners were acting with the other. It was out of a study. It had nothing to do with actual implications of masculinity. Masculinity is masculinity. Feminine is feminine. Toxic is fucking toxic. You can be overbearing feminine. You can be overbearing masculine. Then you're just being an asshole. Yep. All right. But what they've done is they've basically attached that to all of these things. And it... it dilutes the water, right? Yep. So, here's here's my, I know some conspiracies that I will, I don't even really like calling conspiracies anymore, I just call them facts waiting to be proven. But what is it, it, it so like, quote unquote conspiracy that you would be like, fuck it, I will die on this mountain, that this is, this is fact? Um, the one about the, movie with Shazam, the Shazam movie with Sinbad in it, that it never happened. They're trying to convince us that that's a Mandela effect, it never happened. I have a friend who has a copy of it. I know it happened. I know this. But it has been scrubbed from the internet. It is not on IMDb. It is not in Sinbad's uh, list of works. Um, but I know it happened. I will die on that hill. And I'm right there with you. As a matter of fact, we've also got my wife Jen's in the room along yes. with, with Will. Um, Jim, yes or no on Shazam? Oh, what happened? Yeah, well, a thousand percent saw it when I was a kid. See, saw it, saw it, we saw it. Yep. We've seen it. Now, here's the thing that we talked about earlier, and this is what we were actually, this is one of the things that's beautiful about having a green room. When the other comics are on stage, you can sit back in the green room and shoot the shit with the other comics, which is always fun. But when we were talking about this stuff, I was digging, I'm just like, man, we gotta talk about this on the podcast. The theory, one of the prevailing theories that is coming out, and hear your thoughts on it, is that they are trying this incremental march forward of erasing certain things, okay? 
one of my examples, and this is a hill I will fucking die on because I said this tonight on stage, and I even sang it for the motherfuckers that were here, that I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on me. It's count on me. All right, it was ever since I was a little kid, it was count on me, but they are trying to say it's plan on me. All right, and I saw, <clears throat> I was telling you, some guy found a Karen Carpenter album that hasn't been scrubbed, whatever, played it, had that lyric. And there were people over the internet losing their shit over this because they're like, no, it's always been count. But it's an incremental march to erase things. So, what are your thoughts on that theory? Um, I think it's real and it's a very insidious, I, I don't know who's behind it, that's the scary part, um, but an attempt to make us question everything that we believe is real and if they can get us to believe that this never happened, um, what else can they, put? what other agenda can they push? Um, and I think that's a very alarming concept. It's terrifying, really. Yeah. Because it's, it, it makes you wonder, like, if this is actually happening, what are the what are the things that they're going to try to erase? What's the big thing? What, you know, facts would they try to switch around? And if they're just waiting for the generations to kind of go away yeah. to where the new generations are coming in, and, like, this stuff is like, oh, no, no, it's fact. It was Berenstain Bears, not Berenstain Bears, or whatever the thing is. Bears. You know, <clears throat> so many different things. The big one, the fucking cornucopia on the Fruit of the Loom. As a kid, I remember getting Fruit of the Loom for, because for some reason, my family was dialed into the fucking Fruit of the Loom people. <laughs> they must own stock because everything I had was Fruit of the Loom. And it always had a cornucopia. It always had it. But you go to the corporation, they're like, no, we've never had that. And there people will come on, you'll see them on the internet, and they're like, no, here's a shirt I had since 19 whatever, cornucopia. Yeah, so it's, it's like, just silly, pointless things. But if they can, if they can push this agenda, what else can they get away with? Exactly. And you know, when people start asking questions and pushing back, then they'll relax a little bit, and then they'll start up again once everyone's forgotten about it. We have very short memories as 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 sheep. People, persons are smart. People are stupid. I 100% agree. 100% agree, and that, but that's, you know, the thing is, it behooves us to understand that, that individually, if we get together <clears throat> and just sit down and talk, yes. and don't say, you're white, you're black, you're Asian, you're Christian, you're Muslim, you know, all these little things, these little insidious devices that they put into the lexicon. To stir up division. Exactly. You know, it's just like I was not that, excuse me, not that long ago, I was out of the country and I was, I was telling you this, I was talking to a woman in a shop um, that I was buying a watch from and the folks in that country, like many, are very focused on American politics because as America goes, so goes the world still, even as crumbling as we are. And... <clears throat> You know, we were talking about it. I said, you know what's interesting? I said, the folks, the they that's out there, and there is a they, and I, I will give you a factual example of this after I finish this, but the they, what they don't want is this exact thing. You and I have never met. We are of different races, or not races, skin tones, cultures, everything. There's only one race that's a human. And I said, but what they don't want is for you and I, who have so little in common, to sit here and have this discussion where it's like, absolutely, we're cool, I'm cool, you're cool, we think the same, we just want everything to be cool. That's not what they want. They want us to hate each other. Yeah. Because it distracts from whatever agenda they have going on behind the smoke screen. 100%. And there is an agenda. And if Folks, I'm going to put this out there. For those doubters, and I've had many friends that are skeptics, um, but have you ever heard of the Gulf of Tonkin incident? No. Okay. If you ever heard somebody that's like, oh, it can speak, you know, the government wouldn't do that. First of all, yes, the fuck it would. But second of all, if anybody ever doubts and calls it, you know, conspiracy theorists, it's like, 
ask them, have you ever heard of the Gulf of Tonkin? 95% of the people I've ever talked to about this have not. So here's the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Uh, that's what got us into the Vietnam War. Okay, and what they said was we had a battleship that was fired upon in the Gulf of Tonkin, T-O-N-K-I-N, look at the fuck up, and that is the impetus for war. That got us into war, the excuse to get us into the war. Then the Secretary of Defense came out later and said, yeah, we lied about that. They fucking lied about it and admitted it, and what is attached to that is thousands of American families were destroyed by the deaths that came from that. So yes, your government absolutely the fuck would. And when you want to talk about, no, they, there's no conspiracies, right fucking there, bro. So that's, that's, that is always my go-to example for that stuff. It just frustrates me. It's very frustrating. You feel very helpless as one little person. But you said it before, the key is just to talk to each other. We all have so much more in common with one another than we have differences. But when we're, you know, forced, not forced, but, you know, directed to focus on the differences, you know, color, race, religion, um, that, that becomes our focus. And we need to make a conscientious effort to focus on our commonalities. Because we all, most people are good people, there are exceptions. Um, they, they want good for themselves and those around them. Um, and they just want to have a good life. Yeah. Yeah. And we just, and that's, you know what? And that's, I think comedy is a great example of that. You know, everybody able to come together, have this beautiful live moment. Yes. And they just want to enjoy themselves. And most people don't mind working. You know, I mean, I'm all for the four day work week. I think this five day work week shit is crazy. But, you know, with enough time to relax and everything else, people don't mind working. They don't mind living in a structured society, but it's just all these little, again, those insidious devices that they use for division. It's, it's killing us. Power so, corrupts. Uh, that's one of my favorite sayings. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So, all right. Well, that's conspiracy corner for this week. Um, <laughs> so, all right, so here's a, uh, an off weird question. Have you ever been in a fist fight? No. Not once? No. Have you ever been? Okay. So, all right. Well, that, that, that. All right, well there's a whole 12 minutes. There. I mean, I have, I have, like, I think they're dreams of ineffectiveness because I dream that I will punch someone and it just kind of falls flat. I mean, I used to fight with my sisters, but it wasn't, you know, all out punching or anything. Grabbing hair and. Yeah, throwing what? things. Did you ever hit her? Like, bad? I mean, I threw a chair at her. Fuck. <laughs> I've never been a fist, but I WWF'd the <laughs> fuck out of my sister. She was fine. And, you know, after the hospital visits a, and the... I got a Nintendo controller thrown at me, and you know, I got a couple stitches for that. It was, it was all good. It was That's fun. some pretty serious shit. I, okay, so I did, I did get ever into, like, a down and out like drag, knock down, drag out, fist fight with my sister. I mean, there were times, when she beat the shit out of me a lot, like, admittedly, she was, she bullied the shit out of me when I was younger. But there was one time she picked me up from wrestling practice and we were driving home, we were driving through Flora, I remember this so very clearly, we were driving by the old elementary school, and she had finally just pushed me to my limit because she had always just beat on me all the time. And, I picked a really bad time to like snap <laughs> because in I in the car as we're driving down the street and I just was like Mah! and I grabbed the top of her head I'm like would you fucking stop bully and like her head is just going to hit it the steering wheel and the car is just doing this and she's like we're gonna die so yeah I always felt bad about that one um, you know, almost killing us, and then like grabbing my sister in that manner is not the. But she, I mean, she literally beat the shit out of me. What she would do in our house, I don't know how you and your sister fought, but she would chase me through the house, and it was always a sprint to get to the bathroom because it was the only goddamn door with a lock on it. And I would get to the bathroom, and if I could get the door locked, I was safe for a minute. Except it had this little hole in the fucking, the, the brass, like, coupling thing, she would go get a butter knife, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. out of the damn drawer and put it in there. And and then she would ram her shoulder. This is torture, right? Shoulder into the door, and I'm, you know, trying to keep her out. And then she would get her fingers in, right inside the door, and she would like, if you smash my fingers, Dad's gonna beat your ass. And he would, because I hurt her, because they believe her story. And then finally, one day, I had one, and I just went, wham, and just <laughs> put a people. And she, and of course, I got in trouble that bit. Worth it. Fuck every fucking lick I got, bro. <laughs> now, why, why did you want to ask if I'd been in a fist fight? <laughs> No, it's just, well, it's a, it's a thing. It's like, some people have, some people haven't, and it's just one of those weird questions. It's just like, you know, you, what, you tell, what made me think of it is you talk about the commonality of life. And, like, I remember my sister beat the shit out of a girl named Gidget, I'm going to give the last name, who jumped her at the <laughs> skate rink. And she was punching my sister from behind, and my sister just reached up and grabbed her fingers, spun around, and went, clink. And we, nice. Yeah, well, it was a sweet move. Um, but yeah, no, it just made me think, because, you know, it happens. I mean, people get getting scraps growing up. So, you know, it's like, but you talk about your sibling fights, you got a fucking, you got a controller to the face. Like, what even was the, the, I mean, why? they were like the initial, well, okay. Uh, we were playing the original Super Mario, original Nintendo mm -hmm. Entertainment System. Um, and she just, like, jumped down a hole. It was an accident. But I'm, I'm like, sure it was. <laughs> that was... <laughs> So it took. She, and and this is my older sister, and she's like very much a pacifist now. <laughs> so I mean, my younger sister and I, we had it out. That's the one I threw the chair at. Okay. Um, so the pacifist, be like, sure, I, and you jumped out, and she's just I like, just, fuck it. <laughs> you think? But she used to beat the shit out of the neighborhood kids. Yeah. See, that's how my sister was. This she was one a kid broke her glasses, and she just. Pounded him. Nice. I don't know when, when she found Jesus, but uh, at some point in my life she did. I mean, she's she's an ordained minister. <laughs> and anytime she acts up, you're just like, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I still have a little bit of a scar I there. Do, I do have a scar. <laughs> That's awesome. Totally so, but like now, you guys all like yeah, get along get famously. Really so, well. yeah, so it is with my sister, so get along totally great. I just, we never, it was never that family, I don't know how your upbringing was, like we, you know, strict, older, you know, latchkey kids and shit like that, but my parents never did that thing where, and I've heard so many stories of this, um, and maybe you knew people like this, where it was like, if there was a fight, it was like, go out in the yard, and beat the shit out of each other, and then once it's done, it's done. Like, did you guys ever have that kind of thing? I know being girls is a little bit different, but still, I know I know families growing up in the country where they're like, they have all girls. It's like you go out and just beat the fuck out of each other, and then you know, shake hands and stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't really remember it being like that. Or, I mean, my dad would just say, just drop it. I'm like, you don't understand. I need resolution. I still have that problem to this day. My husband wants to walk away from a fight. I need closure. I'll go, I mean, I'll go to bed mad, but we're not done in the morning. We're starting up again. No, I'm just saying, like, I'm feeling the energy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm very passionate about this. I need closure. Apparently there's some things that need closure. Maybe there closure might be. Right now. Run. <laughs> I'm telling you, run. All right. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, we've been mad at this uh, for an hour. It's been great talking to you. And... Let me ask you this, or, yeah, if you have something to say to somebody chasing a dream, stand up, whatever it is, you know, because you're like, ah, I can never do that and all that stuff, and like you're throwing that out there, obviously you not only can do it, but you're doing it like a fucking champ. Um, is everything okay? No, I'm just getting ready to turn it off when you're done. Oh, thanks, brother. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Big Will. That's who you guys are here, Big Will. All right, Sasquatch, actually, is it? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's, his, that's his meaty paw that you just saw. Um, all right, but if you had something to say to people that were going to chase a dream because you said yes, what would you say to them? Uh, first thing that comes to mind is just write things down as it comes to it. Especially the older we get, you think you're going to remember it, but you won't. You won't write it down. Um, and in, in some detail, because you might just write down a couple of words, you won't remember what you're talking about. 
talking about. Write stuff down. Um, and a cautionary thing I would say that really took me by surprise um, is how, I mean, it's the high is legit. When you get people laughing at your stuff, it is legit. Yeah. But that dopamine crashes the next day. And it's not just a matter of having to, you know, be around and do your normal job and be around the, the muggles and the peasants. Um, it's not, it's not what it is. It's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but I mean, I am literally down in the dumps and just, oh, I have no energy. I don't want to do anything. Um, and I don't know, maybe you can, does that even out over time? I don't know. It does even out over time, but it's, you know, I think tonight was a good example of it because it was something that we all experienced which was you know I'm the GM of the club here and everybody had a crusher show tonight like everybody at least crushed it the headliner uh, Steve Iatt who's again amazing so. crushed it and I had an excellent set like a two excellent sets it's just it was a great night all the way around and so it was, it was this amazing high, and everybody's like, oh my god, you're so yeah, great, it's so great, I'm so funny. Everybody's praising you, but as soon as the last person walked out the door and they're cleaning up the room, the staff here, who's amazing to, to a person, uh, they were like, hey, we need trash bags. And so I go from, and again, you're at this height, yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like, oh. Reality. Yeah, it's just like, it, like I said to Steve, because he and I were laughing about it, it was like, yeah, I was just pulling ambrosia from the gods, and now I gotta go get hefty bags. Okay, all right, yep, so that's, it's, it does even out, because you do know that there are other shows and things, but, like, what happened tonight will never happen again. That's the thing about live stand-up. Yeah. Every show is, it's, it's a, an event, you know, and it's, it stays in that spot and will always live there. But you'll never recreate it. Like the flannel shit, never happen again. His thing with Marty, never again. So it does it does get better, but at the same time, you will feel that thing. And I can't I can't do anything for you. you just gotta Yep, do it again. Just get out there again. That's how comics get their applause. <laughs> <laughs> Mainline it. <laughs> and may I say, those are some very nice fades you have. I would totally tap those. Oh, shit. That was such a nervous joke. I know. Garden was this broadside of a bar. Oh my gosh, that's on your forearm. Oh, I know. It's beautiful, right? This, that yeah. is sexy to a nurse it right really there. It really is. And it doesn't roll. Oh. oh. Rolling is a fallacy. It's only for amateurs. All right, so uh, Elise, thank you so much, and I, I can't tell you how awesome it's been to watch your like very quick rise to just being professional and excellent at this job because the MC is the most important. Like headliners, features were great, you know, that's all wonderful, but the MC is the most important part of the new show. It's Answer. probably my weakest area. Though. <laughs> I forget everything. I'm supposed to we get to it eventually. It's fine. Get to it. You handle your business. There you go. You do a good job. So um, it was awesome. Thanks for coming out. And thanks again, you guys, for tuning in. Whether you're watching this or you're listening to it on uh, Spreaker or iHeart or uh, Spotify, uh, appreciate you guys being here. Uh, don't forget to check out Black Label Chronometers and MyVibe.com. That's M Y V Y V dot com uh, shank 15 on both of them to get discounts um, also check out my buddies at meet so horny dot com that's msh dot com they have great spices jacoby ray's a buddy of everybody here and man they just have great products so don't forget to check they're not even giving me any discounts or anything i just like the guys um, they're, they're they're doing their stuff and uh, don't forget to check out the underground laugh lounge and uh, you know what don't forget guess what it comes down to is Get busy laughing or get busy dying.